The Small Business Show, episode 193 for Wednesday, October 17th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show BFA Small Business. Sponsors for this episode include timingapp.com slash business. And gusto.com slash SBS. That's all I'm going to tell you for now. We'll talk in more detail about those later here right now in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. We're going to have to get those BFA uh, t-shirts. Oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's what we'll do for uh, for the 200th show. <laughs> do a, yeah. release, a, release a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. that's a good coming, idea. Coming up on- I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, coming up on show two hundred. That's pretty good. I'm I'm excited about that. Yeah, same. It's, it's good. It's uh, you know, it's interesting. We're we're pre-recording this show because we both have other obligations on the seventeenth. But uh, it it always brings me back to one of the first things you told me when I came to you and said, "Hey, I have this idea for a podcast. I want to talk about you know small business. As I, I love doing it, and I want to give back to the." you know, the uh, small business community. And and the thing you taught me was one of the most critical things about the podcast is, is being consistent. Yes. And always being, you know, okay, if you're going to do one episode a week, one episode a month, one episode a day, uh, you need to be consistent. So your audience knows, you know, that it's coming. And I thought that was so great. And and I thought about seeing about that earlier this morning uh, as I was putting notes together. And that's part of, you know, consistent and scheduled content that your followers uh, come to rely on. Yeah. And and I think that has served us well over the last few years. Well, it has, but we could be better about it, Shannon, if I'm being perfectly yeah. honest. Right. I mean, we know well, that, you, you know, I mean, it, it's a content requires or, or yeah. producing <laughs> something like this, right. Requires a yeah. commitment to content consistency. Right. And, well, and we were good at this part, this, at part, this part, correct. Yeah. But, but we suck <laughs> at some other ones. <laughs> yes, totally. And, and, and yeah. yeah, because no matter what your business is, our, our business here with, with this in particular is certainly rooted in content, audio content. Yeah. But yeah. So to, let's talk about, let's talk about content. This. Yeah. Yes. It's not the let's only talk about content. content. And then, Oh yeah, absolutely. And then we're going to interject during the show what what we struggle with, and well, I mean, I, you know, what we've talked about doing, and and then how what has come to fruition, or what, or what has not, you know, that kind of thing. Because I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's truth, man. It, it is all of us uh, are fight this battle to do this stuff. So, uh, so let, let's talk about content just in general first. Uh, what it is, and and when I'm talking kind of anything, whether it's a podcast. Uh, you're posting articles in your blog, creating videos, posting photos on Instagram, whatever it is, white papers, your tweets, any, you know, if you're making comments on other people's articles, anything that's keeping uh, your your name, if you're building your personal brand, if that's your small business or or your small business uh, name out there. Yeah. And, uh, and I will, am, am I, I, I want to yeah. point out here that while our business is rooted in content, it, you, what we're talking about today has nothing to do with that, right? It, it, like your business. You know, we talked to that that guy last week, right? Ben Schroeder from Santa Barbara Cider, yeah. and yep. he's better at content than we are. Right. Because he has his core yes, he business. Is. He makes cider. We have our core business. Yep. We make podcasts. Great. You got to do that well before you can even think about the rest. But that's a given. Now, the next part is being active with with your content, whether that's, you know, your social media or like you said, white papers, whatever it is, that's the next level. And and Ben is obviously, you know, if you went and checked out his stuff way yeah. better at that than we are. And that's yeah. where we he all is. need to get to and and beyond. And I, I, yeah. And I, and I I wonder, you know, like I, I think of it often as a as a, a not a not a negative, but a, a benefit or a pro that, oh, I've got all this different stuff going on at the same time. But I also think one of the negative aspects of having multiple businesses and all these different projects uh, is it is hard to focus uh, on one thing and go deep on it. 
And I think that going deep is, is, uh, you know, creating that content where like with Ben at Santa Barbara Cider, where they've got, okay, even he does have another business, he's got two partners right. in Santa Barbara Cider. So they're able to focus maybe deeper and, uh, or, you know, maybe I'm just making an excuse. I, I think, know. I think that sounds like a really <laughs> yeah. nice, convenient excuse. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It might be, yeah. it might be. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. Okay. Ow. So, you know, the thing about it, uh, the, the great part about content, you know, is you, it highlights your expertise, whatever you're talking about, whether you're, you know, like in our case, we're talking about small business. Um, and you know, it builds trust with your customers. Well, it doesn't and just, I think it, it's really it builds important. trust because you're not just highlighting your expertise, you're sharing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and adding, that's and adding value. To yeah. That. There's value yeah. to that. Right. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, all we talk have about- to be to be uh, shared expertise. I mean, you can just yeah. highlight, you know, if you have a picture on Instagram of anything, uh, man, of anything like that's great. But anything. there needs to be something along the lines that that makes it valuable. And, and sharing your expertise is certainly one way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that um, and I. I don't recall who we were just talking with recently about it, but we, we were on a recent interview. We kept talking about adding value. Maybe it was a cricket guy mm, um, yeah. and it might've been cowboy crickets. And he was talking about uh, adding value first, being the first one to put it out there to uh, just anyone, a potential customer, that kind of thing. And, and I think that's a really good thing about content is putting something out there that has some value and not expecting, you know, something in return every single time. I think this is a time when you're creating content that you don't always have to be selling. In fact, I, I, I would argue that, you know, that maybe it's that 80-20 rule where 80% of the time you're not selling uh, and 20% you are, uh, or, or, you're, or you're just more subtle, you know, about it. Yeah. Um, and and I've seen some guys, one of the guys I think could do a great job is a company called Small Dog Electronics, uh, Don Mayer and his son, Happy. Uh, and they've been doing it for years and they do a number of newsletters and it's just a ton of great content and features and good technical tips and everything. And then just at the end, they just like, oh, well, here's our weekly specials and you can, you know, go through them and all stuff. And I've always, uh, you know, really admired the way they do it uh, and and they've. They, they do some great content. I love it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they, yeah, they they are very consistent with that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and you know what what I love about it is it's not just you know written by one person. Uh, I think one of the things that is is important to do with your employees or you know your team, whether it's contractors, whoever, is tap their. Uh, expertise or their written skills or photography or video podcast, whatever it's going to be, but get them involved in creating that content. I have that in my notes today is, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Some people will really rise up and say, oh, I love writing these articles about X. My hobby is, you know, why? And I want to talk about it because it's related to, you know, what we do here, so yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Some people uh, might like writing more important. than you. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll be better at it. it perhaps. We'll be yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But you do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I say that, uh, but, but there is some caution. I mean, you want to edit that you want to proofread it. You, you, you know, you need to, you need to vet their expertise, not only in the subject matter about which they're creating content, but their ability to create content, right? These are two different Two different things. You could have somebody who's a total yeah. expert at, at, you know, whatever it is you do in your business, but may not be a good communicator. OK, well, then, you know, you either have to to hone that with them or shift that responsibility elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And and I, I to your point of like setting the tone and the, yeah. you know, how, how you want to say certain things, I think that is important to edit and, and read it. So, and, and I think we you used know, to have a, from a small business standpoint, um, it, 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 like with many things, this is probably one of those where it's good for you as the owner to start it and then yeah. show to, yeah. to lead by example, but truly leading and creating, okay, here's the tone. Great. Now bring somebody else in. Now the tone will, will evolve as you get more people in, but you want to have it start with something that fits your vision so that you can be behind it and, and, and all of that, and then let other people sort of take it and, and allow it to organically evolve. Yeah. And, and I think, so, uh, 
with with one of my businesses, you know, uh, we we had a newsletter that was fairly popular. We had about fifty thousand subscribers, and I would write it, but I basically it evolved to where I just basically did the monologue, right? Mm. I st- I would write a, an intro, and uh, most of the time, what I wrote was not even about the company, what was going on. It was, I just wrote about what was going on in my life. It was kind of a social before social, you know, and I talked, it was when my kids were growing up and I would often share, you know, little things about, I mean, one of the most popular ones I ever wrote was when my son was, I don't know, three, four years old. And I was like, Hey, Mike, help me out here. My son, you know, eats his boogers and how do I, how do I get through this? You know, and, 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 and it got a tremendous amount of, of, feedback in a, you know, and then, but right below it, then I had another employee that would write like tech tips because we were in the, you know, the tech yeah. business. And then we had someone else write another column, if you will. And then finally we had the specials at the, at the bottom. And we used to just divvy that up and we would meet and put all that content together. And back then we didn't do it, but now I, I, I could see us then taking pieces of that newsletter and kind of parsing it out and pushing it to various uh, different social platforms, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, posting it to your blog, you know, that kind of thing. So, so creating that centralized hub for your content and then pushing it out in pieces to everything. I think that's really popular Yeah, and, and, that, and powerful, powerful. And it's, and it's, it allows you to be efficient too, where you're, you're putting one thing together and then piecemealing it or chopping it up uh, and sending it out. And I, I think, you know, for people, when we interviewed uh, Kamansi Constable, he was talking yep. about how he spends, you know, a good chunk of time one day a week. I think for him it was Sundays, but it doesn't matter what day it is, uh, where he s- creates and then schedules all of his social content for the week. And, and obviously yeah, he, he might pepper great. more in here or there, but that way it doesn't fall by the wayside. Because if you, I guarantee you, if, well, at least I guarantee me that if I say, cool, I want to post you know, a short little, you know, three sentence, one short paragraph snippet about something to all my social channels three times a week. I can say that right now. And I know that each one of those is going to be five minutes, right? I I can talk about anything at any time, but here's the thing. It doesn't happen. Why? Because I have the same problem (laughs) because five minutes is easy to say, Oh, I'll do it later. Right. I have a sticker on my desk and I share this with my employees. In fact, Oftentimes I'll make it, it, it's a mantra here. Later is now, right? If you say I can do it later, Uh later equals now, right? Later is simply a variable because it is a variable, right? You you know, and I, because we're, we're geeks here, I put a dollar sign in front of later, right? Because it's like later, later could be five minutes from now. It could be 30 seconds from now. It could be 30 days from now, right? So we just do later equals now. And if you're going to do it, if you're going to say, I'm going to do it later, just do it right now. If you say I'm going oh, to do it tomorrow, really great, fine. Put it on your list for tomorrow, but never put it on your list for later. Um, I and, like that. Right. And and that's yeah. where that's where you can really start to 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 get this stuff together, where you say, OK, I'm not going to do it later. I'm going to do it on Monday or Wednesday or whatever it is. Or maybe you do it once a week. Maybe you do it once a month. It, you know, figure out what schedule and pacing works for you and then just schedule yeah. it. That's all. Yeah. When I think, and I think we, you and I have that problem with the small business show in the sense that we have created all this great content over, you know, a number of years and we're coming up on our 200th episode and we've, we've talked along the way about, okay, well, we should, you know, we should create a book, you know, we should write a book and and do it. Then, then we kind of bounced around chapter ideas and that kind of stuff, but it kind of got pushed off to later. And both of us, I think, Speaking for myself, I know you're really busy. You've got all these multiple, you know, things going on. And I know, you know, I know I am very busy and I think you think so. Neither of us wants to kind of pressure or hold each other accountable. That's beyond. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Beyond the fact that we meet at this specific time, we share content, we create or we bring in uh, other small business owners and we produce this show, which is great. And we both enjoy it. Um, But I'd be having the same conversation even if there wasn't a microphone here. Right. Right. I love talking about this stuff. So uh, and and we've done the same thing. Okay, well, now maybe it's not a book. Maybe we create this course and that kind of stuff, but it does get pushed off to later. 
And I think that's what we have to uh, to overcome and really set some or, or to 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 remember Scott Adams advice, not create a goal, but create a system that can lead us to the development of that course well, or that ebook. Or and that's exactly what it is, right? Coming up with a, you do yeah. it every Monday or you, you know, three days a month or whatever, but you got to yeah. have, if you don't have yeah. a system, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, speaking of systems, I want to talk about our first sponsor today, which is timing. I mentioned at the beginning of the show, timingapp.com slash small business is where you go to download this great app that sits on your computer and tracks what you do, right? Because as we say, that which is monitored is managed. And now that you've got something monitoring what you do, now you can manage it, right? Because instead of making you start and stop different timers, timing automatically tracks how much time you spend on each app that you use, each document within the app, and if it's a web browser, each website within the browser, right? Timing shows you exactly when you were working on what, when you slacked off, and how productive you've been so you know how to improve your productivity. And here's the cool part. There's this timeline view, right, where you can see not only how many hours or minutes you spent on something, but when you spent this time. And you can also see when you spent time away from your computer and timing will ask you, hey, what did you do during this time? And it's it's somewhat intelligent about it because it can say, did you eat lunch? Were you on the phone? These sorts of things. So it makes it really easy to fill in the gaps in the monitoring. And then it judges you because, hey, that helps us manage. Right. So it'll tell you, oh, yeah, today you're at 51 percent productive time. Well, I want that number above 80. Right. So. You know, you can go in and you can say, actually, no, when I'm on Facebook, that's actually me creating my content or maybe some of the time you're on Facebook. That's you creating your content for your business. Maybe some of the time it's just goofing off and you can categorize that different stuff so that you can really get it done right. Timing automates all of this, all of your time tracking to save you as much time as possible. It's a really cool thing. And I, I find it I find it immensely valuable. You can even sync it between multiple computers so that you've got all your stuff. If you're like me and you work on different things, check it out. Go to timingapp.com slash small business. There's a link in our show notes here. And that's where you're going to download timing and start monitoring so that you can start managing and you get to go download it for free. Our sincere thanks to Timing, not only for doing what they do and sponsoring the show, but for offering you that 14-day trial at timingapp.com slash small business. And here's the bonus. You can save 10% when you purchase. Same link, timingapp.com slash small business. Our thanks to Timing for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor is Gusto. Payroll and benefits are hard. Right. Especially for small businesses, you don't have the time to be an expert in things like taxes and regulations. And, you know, the reality is that old school payroll providers aren't built for the way we all work in our mobile kind of, you know, frantic spotlighting worlds where we're just jumping from one thing to another and sometimes doing business when we're not sitting at our desks. Well, that's the cool part, right? Because Gusto is making payroll benefits and HR super easy for small businesses. Modern tech, they put all this tech together. Modern tech does all the heavy lifting. So it's easy for you to get things right, right? We're tech people. We're listening to podcasts. We understand we're comfortable with technology. We want a payroll provider that's not only comfortable with technology, but an expert in it. And it's at the core of what they do. This is why Gusto is for you. People love Gusto. They even told us to have you Google them because you'll see that people love them. How many sponsors have said that? It's pretty cool. Here's the thing. Your business probably doesn't have an HR expert and you don't want to have to be one. The good news is you don't need one to use Gusto. With their great software and their great service, you can focus on your business, not payroll and paperwork. And to help support the show, Gusto is offering you, our listeners, an exclusive limited time deal. Sign up today at Gusto.com slash SBS and you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Again, just go to Gusto.com slash SBS. 
that's where you're going to find this for you. Again, three months free once you run your first payroll. Our thanks to Gusto for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. What's That's next? cool. You're good yeah, at that, Dave. <laughs> nice. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> That's good. I like it. I love both those guys. Um, uh, yeah. So we're talking about, you know, uh, when you're out there creating that content, being authentic is really high on my list. And that's what, like we're talking about here, are the pitfalls that we face and how we don't follow through here as much as we should. Yep. Um, and I, I think that authenticity and being open uh, and true with your potential customers or whatever it is, I think it's really important. And I think it's... Uh, endearing to people and connects you with them uh, and, and sharing what's working, what's not, things you tried, maybe, you know, so I, I, I have my notes, you know, share your successes, but I would also encourage you to sh- kind of share your missteps. Um, you know, you can't share everything, but uh, like we kind of ask every person that comes on the show, you know, what's your best mistake that you learned, you know, share that and talk about it because it's just like reviews. If if something or some company has only perfect reviews, people kind of think it's suspect. But if you share what's really going on and they're reading about you on a regular basis and you're getting that out, I, I, I think that's a really powerful thing to do. I would also add to that, share and create and be your own personal brand. Uh, I, I the, Talking about mistakes that we made, you know, with Mac Observer in the early days, we we intentionally, and this is just crazy looking back at this now, but intentionally we're like, no, we got to keep our personalities out of the brand MacObserver.com or the Mac Observer, right? We need to be a, an institution and we need people to see it as that. And you know, that's the, like, I can argue that point and I can make it sound really good. The reality is it's a huge mistake, right? We are a small company. We we were then, we are now, we're a little bigger than we were then, but still, sure. know, we're a small company. We're made up of human beings. And it turns out that people really relate to humans better than they relate to faceless corporate entities. Now, when I say it that way, it's really easy to side on this side of the coin, right? Though this is the right side of the coin. Be yourself. Now, it doesn't mean that your business only has to be your name, but like you did with with uh, with your newsletter, you shared a little bit about you. And then you shared right. stuff about the business, right? And so there, there was, there's a mix there, but let yourself shine through in a way that's natural. You know, you, you definitely want it to be authentic. And some people are simply better, like some people's authentic is sharing more than others. That's okay. Uh, but be yourself, but let yourself yeah. shine through. It is your business. You are going to shine through no matter what. So you might as well accept it and embrace it. it. You know, dude, it took me years to get over that same concept of I wanted the business to seem big mm-hmm. and stable from the outside. And and there is some, you know, uh, you can, I, there's, there's value, there's value that, there. That, yeah. yeah, there is value and you, you want to get, you know, bigger customers and they want to be, you know, who are these people and are they real and this kind of thing. But, uh, over time, you know, I, I got more comfortable with with the fact that we are, like you said, small business, and this is actually a benefit that you you get better at, uh, customer service. You know, you you know us when you call, and you have a, just a, a much better experience overall than you're calling if you're calling some big faceless company. Um, so I think that's that's excellent uh, excellent advice. Um, What's your thoughts on, you know, there's, there's lots of good content out there and it's often, you know, there's a, there's a gatekeeper, uh, in front of it. And then that, it may be as little as, Hey, we want your email before we're going to give, let you read this or email you this PDF. D- does that turn you off, uh, and often get you to, eh, I don't want to read it type thing. Or is that, you think that's a, an acceptable way in exchange for, you know, their, their content. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the content. I'm, I, I am okay sharing some bit of information. I get it. Right. I mean, I get that this is a funnel at some point. Right. And they, they, you know, they want that. Um, You know, it used to be automatic. If you want to hear from us, you have to sign up to our newsletter because there's literally no other way for you to find us. Right. Then with blogs and then Facebook and social media and all that, it's like, well, I can subscribe to you a different way. And it's less, you know, less invasive. 
Uh, at least it seems that way. Of course, you know, sharing your personal information with Facebook is different, but uh, <laughs> it is. yeah. So I like, I'm, I'm okay with it, but it's really hard for me to, to put myself in someone else's shoes because I shoes because I'm a small business owner. Right. And so, yeah. uh, you know, I I bring that baggage to the table and some of it's bad and some of it's good. Right. It's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, sure. fine. I'll you know, I'll let you I'll let you have my email address. And I, of course, I, I think like everyone, I have an email address that, you know, I I can use that that. I know that I only use for that kind of thing. Um, right, right. You know, so yeah, I'm okay with it. And I think it's fair if the content is something that I want, I'm happy to, to give my email Georgia, address. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, there is, there is a line there though. You know, if you make me read five pages of something and then it's like, okay, Hey, now that we're at the bottom, I really still <laughs> haven't given you the information you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Share your email address here. Like I get that you need to, you need to demonstrate some amount of value before you say, now give me your email address so that I can really give you the goods. But but like there's a limit to that. And and there's there's a point at, like too little content. And it's like, well, I don't know if if I want like if there's any value here, this this might yeah, just be a sure. scam too much content. It's like, dude, you just strung me along for five minutes while I read this whole thing. Yeah, it's a balance. Definitely. Yeah, it's a balance. So you've got to show a little bit of expertise, a little bit of, you know, you definitely have to, you know, pull the kimono, pull the curtain back a little bit and say, here's the thing. And then if you want more, like we're, we'd love to have you on our list and, and here's what we're going to do with your information. Right. As long as you're up front with that, I think that's OK. Uh, I think I yeah. think we're all sort of aware of that in today's world. Yeah. And, and maybe, you know, maybe that that balance is, OK, blog posts or whatever are going to be just open and that kind of thing. But anything like a, if you're creating a report or, um, you know, a, an infographic or, you know, something like that where you it has maybe a, a different perceived value. Yeah. You can then put that put that, hey, we'd, we'd like to send you this or share this with you, you know, provide your email address here. And uh, uh, I, I think it's. You know, getting those email addresses are very valuable. Um, I can remember standing in the aisle way in front of our booth at Macworld and scanning, you know, Macworld badges uh, to enter people. We were giving stuff away, right? Sure. That's how we were getting their information. We were giving away an iPad or something like that. And right. uh, we the the party line was, hey, nope, we're not going to subscribe to you anything because, you know, it's so weird. People are often like more protective of their email address than like their social security number. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. It, yeah. 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 And so I would tell everybody, tell, tell them we, we're not going to subscribe them to anything. We're not going to send them anything. Da, da, da. And so, of course, when I had, you know, thousands of, of email addresses and I was thinking, okay, well, how do I actually, uh, yeah. I, I want the, I, I want these, I want to communicate with these people. So I, we just wrote the newsletter and I just started in the subject line of the newsletter. I just said, we, we lied. And I said, we, we lied to you. We're going to do, and, and I kind of made it in a sarcastic kind of joking method, but that was essentially it. And, and I said, you know, if you do not ever want this again, you know, just click this link. And I mean, opting out is so easy. It's so easy. Uh, yeah. But, but again, I got a lot of very positive responses about, wow, that, that was pretty refreshing because it was just straight up and not no huh. BS and Say, look, we we were get get what what do you think? We're gathering your data and stuff. And I think out of I mean, that's I don't know, like probably, that's like the person on the street begging you know, for money that has a sign that says, "I'm going to use this to buy booze." Yeah, right? I'm going to buy whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And you're like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of funny. I think that's more effective than the <laughs> than the other way and uh, of doing it. And I think out of you know the few thousand emails we got, we uh, I probably kept you know a couple thousand people. More, more than half of those people stayed on that newsletter, which was extremely valuable. Um, I, I still would argue your content should really revolve around an email list. I think it's still the most powerful thing to keep in touch with your customers all the time, especially if you're selling or a consultant or products or whatever it is. Yeah. I think it's critically important. All right, so it, I, let's it really talk is. about this. We're gonna we're gonna workshop a little right here mid episode. So we both Good. know that what you just said is true. That email lists yep. are perhaps the most valuable thing that you can do. So. Now let's put our, our time because it doesn't really cost us any money to start one. Let's put our time where our mouths are. What yeah. would we do with an email list here? We, we are going to start an email list for this show. 
So yeah, so what would the purpose to be to increase subscribers, right, and well, try to get them to retain to listen, subscribers, maybe? right? Yeah, because retain, if, that if, would, yeah, yeah. If we can get you folks on an email list, right, and then when we put a new episode out. We can push out to that email list and say, hey, we have a new episode this week. We talked about these things that we talked about, you know, and one of them yeah. would be starting an email list because that's this week and and telling you, hey, you should, you know, if you haven't listened in a little while, please come and listen, you know, like just reminding people of that's the great. value yeah. that we provide uh, and perhaps yeah, in the email, again, putting our time where our mouths are offering some tips. Right. Like like the tip might be start an email list like the, you know, the takeaway from this show and learn about the concept later is now. Right. Like if we can put two of yeah. those little things in there. Boom. It's like, oh, right. These guys have good like they share good stuff because we're yeah, telling you like we it. share good stuff. And so you'll be you'll it's not untrue, but you will think more about us sharing quality stuff if we tell you we share quality stuff and also demonstrate that we share quality stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I it, it. it, yeah, it, I it sounds great. it sounds a little egotistical to sit here and say, we share quality content, but we do. Yep. And so let's show you a little bit of that. And if you haven't come back to listen recently, well, maybe this would bring you back. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Well, and as well, we could highlight other episodes that we've done and different right. things to revisit some of the most popular episodes we've had. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff we could do. And, and, and so uh, here's the, I'll commit to uh, creating that intro paragraph type, you know, after each show. Okay. And you'll, you'll, it, it, what, uh, how about you kind of, you have to create the form on the website to get the signups and tie yep. it into MailChimp or whatever we're going to use. Yep. And, and we'll just add it as part of our weekly routine. I think the routine, the routine is really is important. Key. Yeah. Right back yeah. to the beginning, right? Yeah. We need a, yeah, uh, a, right. a commitment to content consistency. So here we are. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. now it's like, okay, we, 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 uh, we record the show. We post it. It goes up on our website at businessshow.co. It goes over to Facebook to the, you know, uh, yeah. business, facebook.com slash business show co. But then also goes into the support group, which is more active uh, at businessshow.co slash Facebook. And then we post it. It goes out to LinkedIn and Twitter and stuff kind of automatically, automatically. But now what we'll do, and you push, you push it up onto YouTube. I do. And uh, what I still would love to have, what I what has it's been always elusive to me, is really a transcription of each show that we could then uh, post on the site as a blog post. But but it has to be an accurate trans uh, yeah. you know transcription. Even the automated ones, YouTube does it, but it's just nah, it's not that great. And I've used some other That's automated correct. ones, and and I yeah I think I would spend just as much time cleaning those up as I would just listening and you know so maybe we have to hire a transcribe person at some point to yep. uh to do that i i um, agree but let's yeah yeah let's start with adding that email newsletter to the weekly routine we'll mention it on the site uh, or in, on the podcast each week and we'll promote it on our, our social channels and we'll build that list and then we'll share our success or our miserable failure here on the show yeah perfect hopefully, the, right. hopefully well, the I, I will commit to having the engine in place by the time we do episode 194, which is the next episode after you're hearing this. Actually, it gives perfect. me two weeks to do this because yeah, we're recording yeah. this a little early, which is perfect. So, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's great. And then something to where what will help me is if we have a good template ready to go where I can yeah. dump the content in because I don't want to just post well, the show what, notes. What I want to talk about what would be great you know, is if, you know, we use WordPress as our back end. And so yep. I, I don't know if this is possible, but. I, it, I know parts of it are if we use, say, MailChimp and we link that to WordPress, Tie it in. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can add a field to our articles that now when you're publishing the show, you also have a way of putting in that that content. So like the the, the what would be the email post. And so it, we might be able to automate the whole thing or semi automate the whole yeah. thing, which would be yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. freaking yeah, awesome. Or at least kind yeah. of. Yeah, that would be great. I uh, I love this. Yeah, there's actually a plugin, a WordPress yeah. plugin for uh, yeah for mail. There's several so that's, that's WordPress WordPress yeah, plugins for mail. Yeah, yeah, we just got to cool. find the right way. to I think do that's it. great. Yep. Yeah. So the 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 key, I think, and and what I'll I'll leave everybody with is, um, 
the key is always be creating and, and you're probably doing it in some fashion and it doesn't have to be, you know, long or big. It can be short and sweet. Think, think of your social media posts that I know you're doing now. Those are quick and, you know, brief, um, make it part of your culture, make it part of your routine, uh, tap everyone to help you and just make it part of your, you know, your, what, what you're doing on a daily or weekly basis. And, uh, I think you'll be surprised at, at how it will add to your overall business will help a lot. And we'll keep you posted on our journey as we uh, work to increase uh, our effectiveness as well. Yeah. In creating content. Fun. And, I'm and, excited about this, yeah. man. That's good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And, and share your, you know, share your successes and what works for you at, you know, in the support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. That'll take you over there. We would love to hear from you. And, uh, Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much, folks. This is uh, this has been a fun episode. I hope it was as fun for you to listen to as it was for us to do, because we all want to be living that charmed life. So we'll see you next week with a mailing list.